Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our Pause Animation Podcast. Yes, and today we're covering the TMNT reboot from Nickelodeon, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now the 2016 reboot takes the feel of the 80s series and turns the crazy up to 11, showing the Turtle Brothers on their journey to become ninja masters and heroes of New York City, while it also just has some really bizarre encounters with new villains. Yes. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and we'll the case buddies on future podcasts and we'll the pause video. Absolutely. This is a category of science fiction, comedy, and superhero. Yes, all, so, all at once. <laughs> and this series is based on the characters created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Lair. Mm-hmm. And it's the fourth animated series in the TMNT franchise. Yes. And this one has garnered a huge... Uh, division of people and for some it was really odd seeing this out the gate with the advertisements it was so vastly different from their last one which was just called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back in 2012 it was different from the 2003 version different from Michael Bay's it was a, a totally different Turtles show and for some it was greeted with open arms because they enjoyed that it was different because they didn't like that the brothers always looked the same they didn't want to rely on um the band colors and their turtle masks and all that so they actually look uniquely different and they can actually tell the difference without having to rely on that and they also really love the animation which is done by um uh bark productions has been getting a lot of work lately for their style of very colorful and fluid animation and some really weren't sure about or just didn't want to see it and this and we say it's division because for the ones who did love it were very protective of the show for the ones who really loved it to the core from the first season on and second season in movie um there were ones that didn't understand why people some people didn't want to watch the show no we didn't watch it originally we have watched like a couple episodes Mm -hmm. When it was airing on TV, Mm -hmm. and we really didn't become more familiar with it until we watched the amazing movie. Right. Netflix released that movie was the best movie on Netflix. Right. In 2022, I was like, "This is the best movie from beginning to end. Was fantastic." So we said, "Hey, should we watch the series?" Yeah. We took a poll Mm -hmm. on a community channel and our community page yeah and you guys said hey yeah we want you to watch it and tell us what you think so right we've watched all of season one right season two has not been released on netflix yet right and we have to say it's very different than we thought it's very different from the way it seemed to be presented on commercials and we actually end up having a few favorite episodes yes i think about three three or four and I know the biggest one we enjoyed was the one called Late Feet. Yes. It was just such, it was almost like a regular show concept with it. All I needed to do was put a uh, red box rental back in the kiosk before midnight so there's no late charge. That's it. But everything goes wrong and it's like, it's like the universe doesn't want them to turn the DVD. <laughs> and it was hilarious. And for me, I found myself really loving the episodes where... The turtles wanted to get their dad's attention when he said, oh, if you'll do it, I'll give you a hug. Right. And those, like, to me, were the most interesting episodes because they were doing all this just to get a hug. Yeah. And then he actually would keep his word and he would hug them and you see how much they love him and he loves them. And the beginning of the series is kind of, the impression is kind of given that he doesn't love them because he's kind of offhanded. And doesn't pay attention to him at all. He has to sit and watch TV. But we knew that couldn't be the case because this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Right. And in every version before, he's loved his boys. Right. He does in this one too. He's just got a slightly different personality. He's way more modernized too. Yes. Yeah. And another great part I really liked about this is his backstory. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. He was human and he was Lu Jitsu. Lu Jitsu, yeah. Lu-jitsu, he was uh, super, uh, martial arts. Um, actor yeah. and superhero on TV. And I loved it. I was like, okay, so they gave him his own little backstory that is more modern mm-hmm. and fits. And he was a star in the 70s. Right. Clearly. Right. From the clothes and things he has on. Right. And 
But the way that it's formatted is 26 episodes long. And the majority of them... was shorter. Right. And a majority of them usually involve two 11-minute segments. Some are in a, a complete 22-minute when it's like a special or something more plot-related. They extend it. But for the most part, it's the two segments. And for us... It looked like it took a while, and we mean a while, for the show to find footing. Because the first episode, it's like, okay, it has potential. It's really different, but it's potential. And then episodes after, you're kind of going, what am I watching? And they were very off-kilter, and the whole point they claimed was, the 80s one was goofy and nonsensical people accept it so they try to do just the same thing and just do whatever and you're supposed to accept it for us sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't the banter was always good though i have to say the banter between the turtles was always good it was on point it had a flow and it seemed to be natural i have to say that whenever they talked there was a good flow amongst them the whoever's writing has given them this natural rapport that really comes through in the series itself. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets about, actually to like the last three episodes of the season, it hangs. It finds its groove. It's like, yeah. And for some, they were fine with how awkward it was in the beginning because of the end. And to me, you know, a lot of, some people, it's unpopular opinion. Put your best put fo- best foot forward with your show or your movie. Don't just wait till the end or the next season to get good. You might want to try doing stuff in the beginning. However, they do put some good material in the beginning. It's just you kind of it's like two different shows in the first half of the se- season and the second half or even like the last few episodes like a whole different show. And the movie was a completely different animal from the show you were watching. It could have been a standalone, not connected, and it still would have been outstanding. And for like the sometimes the humor worked, and sometimes it was kind of like I think they needed to fill in some space for the show. And for some, they like nonsensical, silly, goofy type shows, and we do too. It's just the way it's written now is much different, especially from the '80s one. So. Is more of the belief that randomness is comedy. So most of the comedic episodes were based on random things or tropes or things based in the new world of these turtles. Because they really don't have many of the original villains in here. They have the Shredder who's infinitely different. They have Krang, who's in the movie and is diabolically evil. He's not a a joke in the slightest. Mm -hmm. They sort of have the Foot Clan, and say sort of. The Purple Dragons are completely different. They're not a gang, period, like in the uh, other version. And there's no... Oh, the Bat Stockman's a kid now, so he's not really much of anything in here. And Bebop and Rocksteady don't exist. And it looked like they really just wanted to rely, they didn't want to rely on the old show and the comics for the villains. They made up their own villains and their own mutants to be the antagonists for the Turtles and then save the Shredder and Krang for when they really want to do a really big and epic storyline. Absolutely. And then uh, another weird thing is that the mutants aren't called mutants anymore in here. They're called yokai. If you are well known in Japanese folklore mythology, that's not what yokais are, but they decided that's what they have adopted the mystic creatures and the mutants. They don't want to call them mutants anymore. I guess though it sounds fancier. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, they still have the ooze, but it's more of like a magic thing. It's not really science, it's more of magic because, you know. Uh, science takes more work to figure out and make sense, even though it's the turtles. So they said, let's just say it's magic that they're mutated. So let's just let's just do that. And that's kind of what they decided to do for this show. So there's a whole society of mystic magic mutants who live in a 
dimension, another dimension of the city. They have their own city, their own restaurants, their own way of life. They got their own mafia. I'm not kidding. Their own yakuza, their own everything, and mystic weapons and all that. And that's a really odd thing because that's part of the turtles' appeal. Yeah. And they decided to change it. Yeah. But I guess for some it really, really worked in the beginning, and for some. Like us, it just took us a while to get used to the change and how they were being reflected. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out quickly to the voice cast because there's some people that we really love doing the voices. You've got Omar Benson Miller, who I'm not really familiar with. Ben Schwartz, of course. Yes. You have Kat Graham as April, and she's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. She, I would have never guessed this was her. I've seen her in other movies. I would have never guessed it was her if I hadn't seen her name. Eric Bauza, John Cena, Roger Craig Smith, Josh Brenner. So they've got a really great cast of voice actors voicing recurring characters. Mm -hmm. So they really made the right choices. Yeah. Ben Swartz, you can't help but love him whenever role he does. Right. So of course, he's perfect in this show. Right. <laughs> and I also want to give um, a shout out to you, the music. The theme music composed of Matt. Matt, let me get it right. Matt Mahaffey and Letitia Wolf because the intro is awesome. Yes, it is absolutely definitely. awesome. You you never want to skip it, and you explained to me the way it was created. Yes, it was all done like it's one shot, and it constantly kept moving from one thing to the other, but it never changed the scene. It was just all entirely one shot, and people really went rabbit over it, and they kept replaying it over and over to see what they missed. It's been played over a thousand times for. Uh, all together, but some people watched it 100 times just so they could see anything they missed and how fluid it is. Yes, it is. It is fantastic, and the music that goes with it is perfect. It actually gets you revved up for the show. You're listening to this, and you're watching this, and you're like, okay, this is going to be great. And I think the first time that we did see a couple episodes, somehow we missed the intro. Because when we saw it here, and I was like, was this always the intro? And you were like, yes, this is one of the things that's really people love mm -hmm. about the series is the intro. And I can see why it is fantastic. It is difficult to keep up with everything. So you have to watch it multiple times yeah. to see all the action and the things that are happening. But it's got a fantastic intro. Mm -hmm. I hope they didn't change it for season two. I hope they stuck with it because it was perfect. Yeah, definitely. And... As he said, the characters are very, very different. And as is now is the, the, the thing with the Turtles franchise, that each person that comes up with their own version of the Turtles has to make it drastically different from the last. They, originally, they were just kind of doing what they did from the comics, mm -hmm. but putting it in a way where kids and adults could watch it. But then after 2003, covered a lot of it. Well, he said, well, we don't want to keep covering the comic over and over. They just go to this one. So let's just make it really different. So 2012 came along and did a whole different take. Michael Bay came and did a whole different take. And viewpoints vary. And this one actually took inspiration from Michael Bay's version. So for ones who hated that movie, it's like, well... Clearly, he did something right because they used it here, and it, it was it skyrocketing in popularity. So, clearly, it wasn't as bad as you think it was. So, now with this, this one is a whole another different animal separate from the other versions. Right, and it looks like for the beginning, it taking so long to pick up speed, the turtles were finding out and discovering who they are. I think that was the message. Because, yeah. again, in the end... They found their groove, but the last episode, April tells them that they shouldn't lose themselves being the turtles that their dad wants them to be. they got to maintain their own individuality. Yeah. So I think that also was the message. Yes, be better. Yes, improve, but don't lose yourself in the process. So I'm guessing that season two, that's going to be more of what it's about, and they actually are exhibiting their superhero team in two. I don't know, but we'll find right. out if if and when Netflix decides to uh, have it there so right. that you can watch it. But it's interesting. I really liked the last three episodes a lot. Really, really did. You got to see them work together as a team. Mm -hmm. They found their groove. They found their dad was proud of them. It was just 
everything that I wanted in the beginning, they gave me in the end. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what season two has to offer. It looks like it's going to be shorter because it says that the series, two seasons total, was 39 episodes. Yeah. How many did we watch? And we watched 26 for the first season. And it, yes, the show so got it canceled. Thirteen. And, and it episodes. was weird because the last show they did, 2012, was popular and doing well. Nickelodeon decided to cancel it, start all over. And, no, and people were upset. And in here... They cut off even sooner. Second season didn't even get that much. They canceled even sooner. It's like, well, what's the point of having this on here if you're not going to let them finish? Like, you're just trying to get another Turtles, constantly get a new Turtles show every other year, which isn't really a smart move because you already got a growing audience and it's cut off because you're trying to put out uh, more content. And now they've got another version coming out. Yeah, Mutant Mayhem that's created by Seth Rogen for the theaters. And you can see that, again, it's totally different from what this concept mm-hmm. was. So, we'll see what it offers. But if you have seen Rise of the TMT, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you watch it on Nickelodeon, where it originally aired? Or did you watch it on Netflix like we did? Do you have a favorite turtle? Do you like what they did with this particular version? If you really want to hear your thoughts, let us know. And if you haven't seen it, like we did, and it's available season one right now only on Netflix to watch. Mm-hmm. Give it a watch, come back, and let us know what you think. All right. If you haven't already subscribed for updates, movie videos, favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your support and allowing us to spread, spread our joy and share it with you. And thank you for recommending that we watch it because it was really different from what we expected. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple more podcasts coming up with things you say you wanted us to cover on the community tab. So be on the lookout for those things. And if you got any suggestions you can think of right now, let us know in the comments as well. Right. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Mask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace.